We're here in the shop today and we're going to focus on the laser cutter. Um, right now we've just got this uh, tail of loose hose that we can plug into our air supply line on the wall here, but that's just dangling. And I also want to have a, um, an air hose uh, constantly connected as well, just so I can blow off dust here and clean off my workbench and stuff like that. Um, but the downside is I have to you know, reach over the laser cutter every time, so I want to split it to begin with before the regulator valve and then I want to constantly have that connected because I do have um, I got this 24 volt um, air valve so that I can actually let the laser cutter controller um, control whether or not the air is getting through to the, the head of the laser. So um, follow along as I just modify our shop here a little bit to be more efficient, more effective. So I'm going to start by pulling off that assembly that's on the wall currently um, that has a, I believe it's a 3 8 inch uh, rapid air hose, flexible tubing coming down um, from our compressor on the other side of the shop. And so this is going to be the new uh, manifold essentially. We'll have, this side will come off with a flexible hose to the um, to that assembly that we'll move to the side of the laser cutter. That assembly has a regulator on it, it has a filter and a dryer, and then after those we'll put on our 24 volt uh, valve. Off this side we'll just put our, um, our spray gun just for spraying off dust, using air tools and the such. So this assembly will get mounted on the wall and we'll move the existing manifold off the wall into the side of the laser cutter. So I know that when I put this on the wall, I'm going to mount it onto actually a piece of conduit that's just coming down the wall. It's really the only thing. I can't screw any more holes into our concrete wall here. So um, I'm going to create a, I'm going to 3D print a bracket to mount, clamp it onto that conduit and brace on the wall just so when I'm plugging my air hoses in and out of this, it doesn't move on me. Um, and so one thing, I've done in the past and that works really well is I just I take a picture with my phone of um, something next to something I can scale. In this case I'm going to use this square here. Just go ahead and snap a photo. And I also want to get the side view just so I can not as easy. I know it's the same as this block here so I'll just set that guy right in there, just so I have the mounting holes. Okay, I'll go model that up in Fusion and we'll get that printed while we're putting the rest of the assembly together. Let's go ahead and get this, uh, this manifold off the wall. Uh, my lines are depressurized. Just gonna go ahead Disconnect the laser power supply. I've just got magnets here on the uh, port, so that comes off. Just depress this rapid air fitting. That comes off there. So there's the re pressure regulator, filter, and uh, dryer. So I'll just set that here. This is going to be our new, our new manifold. If this leaks, I'll just have to trim off the end of it just because it's been on one of these pinch valves before. So, shove it in there, all the way down, and give it a little tug just to seat it. I'll just mount right on the face of that conduit there once the 3D print part is complete. I'm going to go ahead and remove these. from this board. That's loose. Remember correctly. I'll take that one off first. Just require my longer bit.
So what I'm gonna do with these now on the actual laser cutter is um, I'm gonna rivet them onto the side of it. So my original plan was to rivet the regulator, filter, and dryer assembly to the side of the laser cutter cabinet, but instead I uh, went ahead and used some 1024 button head cap screws and lock washers and that's on the inside of the uh, cabinet. This area is pretty safe. I can stick my arm into that exhaust hole and feel around in there. The Towards the back is where the water and air supply lines come through but I had already reached through and checked to make sure I had clearance. So after doing the first pilot hole I went ahead and made sure I could um, get it level. The drill didn't end up reaching so I just took my Allen wrench and scratch the paint to mark my pilot hole location. And I just went ahead and drilled that pilot hole and made it bigger for the 1024 bolts. So well, here I am wiring up the 24 volt solenoid valve for the airline. I'll put a link for this down in the show description. Um, these are the two plugs that you will um, wire up. The red goes to pin number one, which goes to the plus 24 volts from the laser cutter controller. And then you just pull it through the case here, strip the end, um, and it's got a nice little screw terminal on there as well that you can tighten the exposed wires to. I pull out the black. This is going to go to terminal two. Just throw, pull it through the case. Do the same thing. Wire it to the terminal plug after I strip the end of it. And that I put on terminal number two. And then once you've got that done, you can just fish the wires back through the plastic case and clip the uh, terminals back into the cover. And then you'll just screw that back into the solenoid valve and bring it over to the machine for installation. So here I am back at the laser cutter. I've got the electronics exposed on the side panel of the laser cutter cabinet. And I'm just going to cut. This is the air supply line that runs through this portion of the cabinet, which is very convenient. Uh, so I'm just going to take a pair of diagonal cutters, snip that line in half, and then um, use the quick disconnect air fittings um, to put that solenoid valve in line. And then I'm just going to open up these chases and run the black and the red wire down to my laser cutter control board. That is the whiteboard. And so I'm just going to fish them over, get them the right length, and then I'll go ahead and snip those to length and expose some of the wire so that I can mount it in the terminals. So like I said before, red is going to go to the plus 24 volt on the controller. I believe it's terminal 6. There's already some brown wires there. And then the black wire is going to go to the wind terminal, which is terminal number 5 on my board. So. Yours might be different, but wind and plus 24. And then what that does is in the laser software, which for me is RD Works, um, from under parameters, I get to decide whether or not wind is turned on or off for each uh, layer profile. So any layers that have the wind to yes uh, will automatically turn on the uh, air supply line to the laser cutter head, which does things like um, just helps you cut through materials, helps prevent fire when burning certain materials. So I'm just covering back up some of these chases and then uh, screwing these into the terminal and then I'll reattach that plug into the control board, close it all up and we'll give it a try. And here's how it is when it's turned on. Got a file loaded, I'm just going to press start here. 
And right now you can hear it's not no air. Compressor kicking on. So here you go, you've got the, the valve right there, and you'll be able to watch the light turn on. Flip the switch here. Kicks on. Kicks on. set to 20 psi filter and dryer and just using the normal line so split it over there in the control cabinet area and looks like it's gonna work great right.